Hey everyone, and welcome back to another news update. So, they came for chess. More recently, they came for Go. And now they're coming for video games. This is a bit of a watershed moment in gaming, and what comes out of this is going to open up a lot for the future. Far better AI in the games that you play, as well as new design tools the developers will be able to use. As a player, this is extremely exciting, but also as a computer science grad who's admittedly pretty rusty, it's academically exciting. The sheer accomplishment of the DeepMind team is just quite incredible. So what actually happened? Well, Google's AI research company DeepMind have showed off their latest accomplishment. Now, DeepMind of course made headlines when their Go AI, AlphaGo, defeated a human pro without handicaps on a full board and then went on to defeat the best in the world. Now, this was major because of the nature of the games. So with chess, it's quite easy to look ahead, but the AI for Go has to be a lot more intelligent. Go is a game with an insane amount of branching paths, far more than what you see with chess. Now, this means there are so many possibilities that it's really extremely hard to brute force a win, so the AI actually has to learn as it goes and what make what you could sort of call uh, as being intuitive human-like moves. Now, I don't know how Go is played, but yeah, with a 19 by 19 board, that's a lot of possibilities. Thing is, where do you go next after that? Well, with board games defeated, DeepMind set their sights on Blizzard's StarCraft II. More than other RTS games, well, more than most, StarCraft II is designed with competition in mind, and really it is the king of competitive RTS. When you think about complexity, it's quite insane. Granular movement, many different building placements, many different buildings, large maps with many different routes, units with different active abilities, different armor values, different attack values, different rule sets, different races. StarCraft II is an insanely complex game, and I would go as far as to say that as compared to other competitive games, it may be the hardest for a solo player, purely because of its mix of entirely saturating both your short-term capabilities and your long-term planning, combined with the lack of it being a team game, meaning that there are no delegated roles and responsibilities. It's all on you. So it's deadly for an AI and it's deadly for a human. Now this initiative started years ago, but it's only now that we're really seeing the most exciting results. First, you might be thinking, well, most games have AI opponents. What makes this one special? And that is a good question because it's not necessarily intuitive. So in most games like StarCraft, the AI is not particularly smart. They operate kind of based uh, on a state machine set up by the developer. So they kind of might know what to react based on what you do, but it's all sort of pre-programmed in and it can't really react to things that well. And then AIs often have to cheat such as getting extra resources or seeing everything. They just don't play the game like humans do. And that's where DeepMind's Alpha Star is very different. It sees pretty much what the player sees. It does not have pre-programmed behaviors. It slowly learns the basic mechanics of the game, sort of like a human would, clicking around, using buildings, sending units about the place, and DeepMind doesn't actually have specific code to learn StarCraft II. They are working with a general AI. Now, of course, there are some things so that it can operate with StarCraft II. It is using a special version of StarCraft II that is designed to allow for AI research. But the idea is that, like you, DeepMind has a mouse and a keyboard input, and it sees what's on the screen. Now, DeepMind looks, or plays from actually looking at what is on the screen, and you know, just not by having special StarCraft programming or anything like that, at least so far as its decision-making processes go. Okay, so that's all well and good, but how does it actually learn? Well, initially it does it through imitation with the AI studying player replays and trying to replicate their moves, what works, what doesn't work. And this led to the V0 version of it that we saw at BlizzCon. Now, after that, they have this um, neural network, you know, to, that basically knows how to play StarCraft, but based on the humans. But to advance from that, they ran the Alpha Star League. Imagine a competition. 200 years of StarCraft being played in a week. Now, this started off with the competitors being agents based on the original batch, the original neural network, but then subsequent ones used forked agents, so ones that were a little bit different. So, you know, agents would play matches against each other, and each one of their neural networks would be updated based off what strategies worked and what ones did not work. So they ran 200 years of matches and that's 200 years of learning for the agents. And the agents would try to self-set different objectives, maybe focusing on a certain unit. Um, and this meant that they, you know, they knew about lurkers and how they worked. They'd know about cannon rushes. They'd work all that out. And really a massive variety of strategies. And at the end of this, DeepMind looked at all the agents that they had, 
all the ones that the Alpha Star League had produced, like its sort of more final versions, and they selected the most robust ones, i.e. the ones that they basically felt would perform the best. These five agents would be the first to play against a human pro player. In this case, it was Liquid TLO, someone whose games I've been watching for basically a decade, even in beta. Now, what's amazing is that the five agents clobbered him. What's interesting is how. In the first match, it was a high risk all in that was able to catch TLO off guard and take him out. TLO, bas TLO then basically assumed, okay, this AI is trained to win, so it's just going to pull off, you know, cheesy tactics. Maybe he was assuming that being an AI would have a big advantage in things like micromanagement, but not really, and we'll see why later. Well, in game two, the AI agent went for a very different strategy. It elected to play defensively, slowly building up a massive army before rolling across the map and wiping him out. Now, in the first batch of games, Alpha Star did not play perfectly. It did make some questionable decisions, such as not walling off its base in a Protoss versus Protoss, but still did a lot of things very well. Now, Alpha Star was actively defending against harassment. It was doing things like leaving stalkers behind at its base to fend off enemy oracles, little things that pro players would do, even things like exploiting enemy visions, such as with long grass. The kind of stuff that really you would think would require a bit of intuition, uh, you know, it, it was able to do. And one counterintuitive thing that Alpha Star was doing was it was actually oversaturating its resource uh, generation uh, by building too many workers. Now, this is normally something that people think is a bad idea, but it meant that Alpha Star was able to recover from enemy harassment easier, and that ended up playing to its advantage. Now, that's a pretty novel strategy that is very counter uh, to what is commonly done, and therefore is very interesting. Now, when looking at how Alpha Star engaged in combat, Honestly, it was amazing. I watched a lot of Pro StarCraft and bar things like trying to go up a ramp. It kind of looked like pro play, like the micromanagement, the unit positioning, it was all very strong. There were mistakes, but you know, still. Now it was also doing things like one match where it had 13 disruptors. That's absolutely counter meta and not common, yet it was able to make this novel strat work against TLO. Within each game, it was almost like TLO was trying to adapt to the AI more than the AI was adapting to him. Now, TLO did end by saying that Alpha Star had a lot of surprising strats that led to a lot of its victories, and he thinks that with more practice, he could be able to take most of those games. But still, Alpha Star defeated TLO 5-0. However, TLO does not main Protoss, so they decided to bring in Mana, who was a Protoss main and an excellent player. Alpha Star had another week to learn before the Mana matches, and Alpha Star was actually learning against them, well, based on some of its matches from TLO. Now, the casters all noted how Alpha Star was playing in a more human-like fashion in the later round of games with the extra training really paying off. But what's interesting is that before those matches, they were pretty sure that Mana could, well, they knew that Mana could defeat the version of Alpha Star that defeated TLO. So how do these matches go? Yeah, Alpha Star 5 0 Mana. Uh, yeah, man is a highly accomplished Protoss player, and he was taken out. Now, there is a final show match to cover, but we actually do need to break down some stuff here. So, during then, the AI was able to see its full range of vision, not just where the camera was. It wasn't playing with the concept of a camera existing. Now, it could not cheat past Fog of War, but there was a core difference there, where the humans have to balance where they put their camera. Basically, it's like an economy of attention. Alpha Star did not have to do this, but what was very surprising is that the AI APM and the reactions of Alpha Star were really not what you would expect. Alpha Star had a lower APM, or actions per minute, than the human professional players, and it also had a slower reaction time, which is quite surprising. Alpha Star was slower than the pros, and it won its matches by consistently making more efficient decisions and by playing more novel strategies. Now, what's important is that it didn't win because of god tier micro. Indeed, Alpha Star could be out micromanaged by a pro. It just won through the quality of its decision making, uh, combined with how those strategies were very novel. Now, that said, DeepMind did recognize that they would need a version of Alpha Star that used the regular camera that humans de uh, deal with. So they built it, they trained it over a week, and Mana was able to defeat that version of Alpha Star. Though that was mostly because of slightly messy behavior from Alpha Star, as if the AI was a bit confused and underdeveloped to working in those constraints. But still, it's clear that they made massive progress, and it's only a matter of time before Alpha Star can play with a regular camera without issue. Now, when AlphaGo first beat a pro, people claimed it could really never, you know, it would be a long time before it beat the best in the world, but a couple of months later, it did. I don't think it's going to be too long before we see Alpha Star beating top Koreans. More importantly, though, what does this mean for you? Well, DeepMind, for the most part, well, Alpha Star, uh, for the most part, learned StarCraft blind, with no specific StarCraft-based code being in its um, AI. 
all that it really had was, you know, the stuff that meant it could plug into StarCraft 2 and interpret it. Now, for players, this could be really fantastic. Whenever you go up against a hard AI in a game, it's normally rubbish, but with Alpha Star, you could face off against a selection of Alpha Star agents that have real different uh, modes of playing, but actually feel like human opponents. Now, these are agents that would have actual decision-making that's remarkably close to other humans. So, as a training tool for competitive games, this could be incredible, especially if the developers um, would be able to train the AI against games of the current meta. Additionally, imagine if you had a personal agent that would learn from its games with you, such that it was constantly playing to your weaknesses. As somebody who wants to improve a lot in StarCraft personally, that would just be incredible. Now, I mentioned the meta. Well, Alpha Star did a number of very novel, meta-breaking things. Not all of them would work against the best in the world, but it does mean that these AIs, they can be used for an exploration of game mechanics. Like, it's cool for the live games, uh, and, you know, learning about that, but as a development tool, imagine being able to plug this into Unity and into Unreal, and then testing the games, your game's mechanics against an AI. That would actually have the developer being surprised by what the AI comes up with. It's, that would be so incredible for game development. Uh, right now, it seems really far off, but it probably will happen, and it's really exciting. And I mean, generally, that's it. AI as a tool is very interesting. So from designing better games to providing better AI opponents to designing advanced composites and materials, there's so much potential to leverage its speed of learning, being able to run as fast as, you know, the, the computing power you can throw at it. Now, going through the comments, it was unfortunate seeing a lot of people saying, oh, Alpha Star was using map hacks and things like that. Um, look, I, I mean, I get it. AI is really hard to understand. Trust me, I struggled with that during uni, but I mean, I can say a lot of those dismissals are pretty baseless. Um, they're really made by people who don't really know how the AIs like this work, so... Trust me, this is a very exciting move for gaming, and while this right now is just a StarCraft II thing, in 10 years' time, maybe 20 years' time, expect to see this as the thing that drives the AIs you play against in games, the maybe a tool that developers have to refine their games, to do bug testing, things like that. There's so much potential, and it's really cool to be here to see the cusp of it all happening. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, it's just nice to have some really great news, really. So, yeah, cheers. I'll see you next time.